Hi, my name is Nick and I'm a violinist. In this video, I'll be unboxing and reviewing a $400 carbon fiber violin I found browsing Amazon. I thought this would be fun because at the time of making this video, there appears to be no information about this instrument anywhere on the internet. I couldn't find posts that didn't seem like a render or even a sound clip or a video of the instrument in action. So as a gigging musician, I've always wanted a carbon fiber violin for outdoor gigs and busking. They're known for being impervious to changes in weather and are generally safe to bring into environments where you normally wouldn't take a wood violin. Carbon fiber is actually a popular material to make violin bows with, and there are some really great upper level bows um, made out of this material. Carbon fiber violins are generally too expensive um, to make it worth it for me um, as an investment, but when I saw this one listed for $400, I thought I would give it a try. Generally, carbon fiber violins range anywhere from like $600 for something like a glasser or up to thousands of dollars um, for something like a premium uh, Lewis and Clark um, carbon fiber violin. It's more common for me to see um, larger instruments like the cello in professional use as a carbon fiber instrument. Um, I only know of one person I think that uses a carbon fiber violin as a backup instrument. Um, and I haven't seen anything this affordable before, so I'm super interested. I also want to point out that if you're looking to learn the violin and resorting to Amazon to shop for an instrument, I would highly recommend instead finding a teacher um, or a reputable violin shop to look for um, a proper traditional wood violin to either purchase or rent. In my experience, anyone that gets anywhere learning the violin has gone the traditional route, meaning teacher, lessons, and a properly set up wood violin. Generally, when I play the violin outdoors, I use what I call a junk violin. And my junk violin is about a $200 violin from China, but it's got a professional setup, meaning the pegs, bridge, fingerboard, strings, and sound posts were professionally replaced by a luthier so that the instrument is playable and sounds good. This junk violin solution isn't the most ideal because the instrument is still susceptible to changes in weather um, and heat. The idea is I'm keeping my expensive violin at home and away from any danger. It's quite common for gigging musicians to have a beater violin for outdoor gigs. So this violin was listed for $399.99 on Amazon, but offered one of those click to apply a $40 discount, bringing the final total to $393.29. I'm going to unbox the instrument, give it a sound test, and share my thoughts about it for anyone looking to purchase a carbon fiber violin like this. The product description has some interesting features listed. It includes two bridges, one made of carbon fiber and one made of traditional maple. It has an interesting shape, and from the photos, it seems quite far from a traditional violin. Um, it seems to include its own patented kind of shoulder rest. I'm guessing because the body thins out to a point around the edges, um, I won't be able to clamp on my own shoulder rest. The sound post and pegs are also described as to be made of a composite material. Um, so we'll see what that is like. Okay, so it arrived in a huge box um, and it's actually quite heavy um, and I'm going to start opening it. Okay. okay, so you get a box and inside the box is another box. This is really heavy. Um, all right, let's see what's inside this box. Okay, so I am, I am a violinist. I am not a professional box opener. All right, so it... it I didn't say before, this is called the Donner Rising V1, and it appears to be a new violin, um, new carbon fiber violin uh, on the market. Um, I have never seen one of these in real life. I've never even heard one of these in real life. Should do my best to keep it intact, the box I'm talking about. All right, so inside the box appears to be another another box. And it's very heavy. Oh dear, I hope, I hope that's not the real size of the violin. That would be huge. 
Um, okay. So, Donner, Rising V1. That's a nice box. Um, <laughs> we'll see what's inside. There's a lot of packaging. Okay. Okay, and inside this box is appears to be the violin in a case, and we'll take a look. Lots of plastic. Holy cow! It's so heavy. It is so heavy. All right. So first impressions on the case. Um, it's very small. Very heavy, way heavier than, like, I I have no idea what this is actually made of. It says carbon fiber um, on the product description, um, but you got backpack straps. They appear to have um, been already set up for the backpack carrying. Okay, um, and there's a little piece of plastic for the, the Donner logo, I suppose. Um, we will... Open it up and see what's inside. All right, so I'm gonna flip this around so you guys can see it. At the same time, I'm gonna see it. All right, what's it look like? Okay, anticlimactic. All right, all right, there we go. Okay, so it looks like we've got a bow. Um, let me flip the camera. Um, so you have got a bow. A blanket. It's um, interesting. There's some an interesting stain. Um, and the instrument. Uh, wow. All right. So well, it's very interestingly shaped. It's kind of cool. Okay. Um, uh, I see some indentations to make it easy to put the bridge on. That's interesting. Um, I'm going to um, first take a look at everything else in the case before we look at the instrument. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming this is the, uh, the patented shoulder rest. It's got suction cups on the back. Never seen suction, suction cups on a on a um, on a shoulder rest, um, but I mean it's it's foam. Sure, it works. Um, there's some uh, documentation. If you guys like documentation, um, there's an envelope. It's got a sticker sealed. Let's see see what's in there. Oh, it's an award. Bronze Award 2021, Carbon Fiber Violin, European Product Design Award. Yo, I got a violin with awards. Okay, um, Carbon Fiber Violin. Here's it's got a user manual. Um, in all sorts of different languages. Um, instructions. It looks like how to tune, how to tighten the bow. And um, how to install the bridge. Okay, so I'm assuming in in here um, we get we get um, okay. So here's the uh, I don't know if I'm in focus, but um, here's the Donner rosin in a nice zip ziplock package. Ooh, it's very it's very red. Um, that's interesting. It's got a cloth and it's got um, some plastic around it. I don't know why I smelled it. Um, it looks delicious um, as, as all new, new cakes of rosin use. I probably won't be using this. Um, I, I will use my regular rosin, but um, I'm sure it works like rosin. I'm not too picky about my rosins. Um, and okay, we get a tuner, which is why um, it probably on the box said lithium batteries. Warning, warning. Um, let's take a look at that. Um, and 
It's got a battery. The battery is not installed. Um, I probably won't be using this. I don't. I, I use a tuner app on my phone. Anyways, um, and here are the bridges. So I'll pro what I'll probably do is when I'm when I'm recording the sound clips, I will um, I'll do one of each bridge, and um, we will we will see what they all sound like. And as far as strings, they actually look to me. Now I don't know if this is true. These look to me like Alpha U strings by Dominant. I don't know if that's true, but um, considering they've got the gray winding at the the bottom and the 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 dominant colors on the on the top, it might be. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. Okay. Anyway, it comes with strings. That's all you need to know. Okay. The fingerboard is like matte finish. This is a supposedly a carbon composite. Um, I think what I'm going to do is install the carbon fiber bridge. Ooh. So it says it says Donner on them both. Let's let's see if I can get a close up. I know I'm not a professional YouTuber. This is just for fun. Um, <laughs> there's the bridges. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's do the carbon fiber. And we'll, we'll string it up, I'll rosin the bow, and we'll, we'll see what that's like. Okay, so pro tip for anyone who's installing new strings or a bridge or something, you do want graphite on all the points the strings will um, come into contact with. So up here at the nut and also on the bridge, just to save your strings from wear and tear a little bit, graphite is a lubricant. Or so they told me at the violin shop. So I, I will say it, it looks really neat. Like I've never seen a violin this shape. It's it's very very toby looking and very round. Um, and yeah, here's here goes on the the loop. And we'll put some on the bridge. So to, to my eyes, the, the bridge curvature looks correct, and I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, I will say there is no parchment or bridge protector on the the wood, the wooden um, bridge, the maple bridge. Um, but the curvature and shape also looks correct. It may be a bit thick, um, um, but... Anyways, we'll see. I'm assuming with carbon fiber, I won't need a bridge protector. And a, a bridge protector is a, a tiny slip of um, uh, something we call parchment, which is made of leather, and they're very thin, and they are glued onto the E-string um, area of the bridge to protect the bridge from getting dug into by the E-string. Okay, so here goes. I'll loosen the pegs. Those are... They are pegs. They're a very interesting shape. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, I don't know. They're very oval. Okay. Bridge going in. And I, I guess like there's there's no wrong way to put the bridge in because there's little indents where the bridge is supposed to go. I see a sound post made out of comp composite material as, as um, indicated by the... Uh, product description, and I'll line everything up and give it a tune. Ooh, it's very soft sounding. Let's make sure the bridge is straight up and down. Ah, okay. It, it's so interesting because the fingerboard has like a textured finish to it. I don't know how that's going to hold up, honestly. Um, Sorry. All right. I don't know the, what strings these are, so this is the scary part. So the the pegs are are holding. There's like they seem fitted okay. Um, it does come with um 
Fine tuners. <laughs> this tag is... I guess I'm gonna have to cut this off because there's no way I can, <laughs> I can remove this tag without, um, without the, uh, taking the setup down. All right. All right, what does it say? Donner, made in China, after sale service email, and then there's a website. Okay, so I'm gonna do this thing where I loosen the e-tuner, or the, the fine tuners, so that I can um, actually use the fine tuners. I don't usually use fine tuners on the tail piece. Um, I'm, I'm one of the, uh, I'm part of the one fine tuner game. All right, here we go. So this just gives me some uh, some room to tune. If they're all the way in, you can't tune it up anymore. Um, keep checking my bridge. I mean, it fits really well in one spot. The uh, projection seems actually a bit low. The string heights aren't as high as I, I would I would need to measure it to be honest. Um, there is actually a a little tube on the E string, which I, I think I might as well go ahead and use to protect it from the string. All right, the E peg is kind of slipping. Um, all right, so it's kind of in tune. I'll finish tuning it with, um, with um, the bow once I rosin the bow. Now, Okay, so the bow looks okay. It's got a 4-4 sticker on it, and um, oh, it seems quite short. No way. Ah, uh, it's, it's the correct length. It's kind of heavy. This is also, this is a really heavy violin, I, I, I do want to say. Um, I don't have a scale. I can't tell you guys exactly how much heavier it is, but but after playing the violin for 22 years, I can tell you it's way heavier than my normal violin. Um, okay, so now it it appears to be horse hair. I don't know. Actually, I don't know. You would expect some kind of variation in the color. Um, the hair is very yellow in comparison to like normal violin horse hair. We're gonna. I, I don't know if it ruins the integrity of the review if I um use my preferred rosin, but I'm going to use my preferred rosin um to rosin the bow. Okay, so here we go. This, this always takes a little while. Okay, I'm assuming we'll need to add more rosin in a little while. That's so weird. I'm usually used to having an edge to, to rest the violin on my collarbone. Um, and let's see, let me grab my shoulder wrist just to check that I can't actually use it. Um, yeah, there, there is no way you can use a normal violin shoulder rest on this. You, I guess, absolutely must use this one. And if it doesn't work for you, I guess, uh, too bad. But I, I, it looks like it's going to be fine. All right, so it looks like it slips over the, um, the little in button thing. Um, and yes, it's it's slipping. Nice, nice slipping. Okay, um, and then you suction cup. I'm assuming it onto the back. All right. Yeah. Well, oh, that one's not staying. Wait. Okay. Do I, do I lick them? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I guess it sticks. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll see. I'm sure it'll be just fine. Okay, so here's me tuning it. Some of the first sounds bowed. All right, 
Um, first impressions, it's very interesting. It doesn't sound like a violin. And it's also so, like, resonant. I can feel, like, my jaw getting vibrated by the instrument. It's kind of tingly, and also the suction cups have come off. I, I guess what I'll do is um, try to record um, scale, maybe in comparison to, to my violin that I regularly use, and then um, maybe a piece of rep um, in context um, with like a piano or something, and then and then give my thoughts after that in terms of sound. Um, but um, I mean, it's you get a whole instrument. It seems playable. There's there's nothing really that that to me seems that um, this wouldn't be a good like outdoor instrument other than the the, the it's not very loud. Um, and also the, there's interesting like like notches in the fingerboard that that kind of show where where you're supposed to place your fingers um i don't know how accurate they are i mean they're they seem accurate okay um but yeah it's it's a violin made of carbon fiber you know i've, I've never had a carbon fiber violin so i don't have a way to to compare it to anything else i've tried in the past um but yeah here's um here's a scale um on the Donner Rising V violin, and then I'll do a scale with my regular violin, and you guys can hear the difference. I would say it's it's. Not really as loud as my violin, but um, I don't I don't have any comments on the on the sound until I kind of give it a shot in, in context. So let's do that. Let's um, let's do it this way. Let me play some um, some Glazunov, and um, I'll have the piano. I don't know the concerto. It's just a good um demo piece because it it. it it starts out on the G string and goes up to the E string, um, and it sounds good. Okay. Um, maybe I'll also play some Bach to compare. Um, 
don't know which clock, but um, well, well, we'll see. So, um, here, here are some thoughts after playing, um, this in comparison to my violin. It is very soft. Um, the shoulder rest keeps falling off and, and it's actually really hard to get a, a good, um, a good grip on the thing. Um, meaning while there is a shoulder rest, the actual construction of it is, is very thin, meaning, um, it, it feels thinner than, than my violin when I'm holding it with my, my chin. And I'm actually not not really liking the, the shoulder rest because it, it's very, there's no support. It, it kind of squishes down and I just need some more, more ability to, to fill up the space. Um, it, it's kind of designed one size fits all and I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the, um, the shoulder rest. It does look really nice. Um, I'm, I'm sure maybe amplified it would it would sound really good. Um, but but just in a, in my experience right now, it's it's not very loud. It's a very very quiet violin, um, and the sound is it's it's okay. It's not um, it's not the greatest sound in the world. But it you can play it. You can you can play in tune um, and. I mean, the shape of everything feels all right. Um, I, I, I've seen worse things on on Amazon. Um, yeah, it's um, I mean, it works. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for for a, a, that someone's very first violin, but if you happen to need an instrument to play outdoors, you won't be very loud. But um, I'm sure it would survive the the, the I'm sure it would survive the um, outdoor conditions just fine. Um, considering there's there's absolutely no wood in this its construction, um, I think another thing I'm gonna do is try the um, try the um, maple bridge before I forget. So let me let me swap those and do do the same test, and I'll I'll put it back in um, to the video before this part. So first impressions with the maple bridge, it's a lot louder than it was with the the carbon fiber or the carbon composite bridge. I'm not sure why that is. Um, this, this does seem very heavy and anything you do to a bridge to add weight um, will dampen the sound. So I'm assuming this is going to sound a bit better with the, the wood bridge. It is a bit louder and I can actually achieve some kind of dynamic contrast, but the, the, the general sound is really tinny um, to my ear. It could, could very well sound better um, when I'm playing back, but um, it is it is a very not loud instrument and it, um, it, it, it just doesn't seem, yeah, it's just not a very loud instrument. Sweet. Um, so if, if you guys enjoyed the, the unboxing and review and comparison, please consider dropping a, a like, a subscribe if you're on YouTube, and also um, check out my Twitch channel. Um, I do live performances um, of, of anything from pop to um, classical and even video game music, and it's, it's a really great time, and I would love to have you. I do free requests, and it's a really fun place. So thank you again for, for watching, and take care.